Good evening. Welcome to St. Pedro Catholic Church. Also, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, so I'd like to wish you all happy Valentine's. COVID-19 guidelines. Please wear a mask over the mouth and nose. Families can sit together, keep six feet apart from other parishioners. During communion, keep your mask on until receiving host in your hand. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Frankie. This Mass is being offered in loving memory of Mary La Pera, Esther Estrada, Nelson Ferreira. <clears throat> ABCD campaign. If you have yet to make a gift to the ABCD, we need your help to reach our parish goal of $54,000. $333. Please make your pledge and return to the church office or in the collection basket. The commitment envelopes are by all the church's exits. Respect life, baby shower. For three weekends in October, starting February 14th, Respect Life Ministry will be having baby showers. They are collecting baby items and monetary donations to help the most vulnerable of our society, <clears throat> the unborn. <clears throat> Please be generous. Tithing envelopes. 2021 offertory envelopes are placed on the last pews at the north and south sides of the church in alphabetical order. By the initial of your last name, we urge you to pick up your envelopes as soon as possible. Please see the bulletin for additional information and after Mass, there's a bake sale that the ladies are selling uh, at this exit. Please stand for the opening song. <laughs> Sit Sunday in ordinary time. Let us ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Kyrie 
Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and grant us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. that are just and true, when that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or postume or blotch which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Confess my faults to the Lord, 
and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Move with pity, he stood out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do with it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your clinic pleasing what Moses prescribed that will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A man who got himself in a terrible accident, where he was disfigured, and he lost one of his arms, his left arm. Upon recovery, you know, he at the hospital, he decided to commit suicide. And he went to the roof of the hospital. As he was getting ready to jump to his death, he noticed a man down, dancing like this. But he also noticed that the man has no arms at all. So he changed his mind. He went to the man downstairs and said, well, here I am, I lost one of my arms. You know, and I'm so depressed. But when I look at you, you look so happy. You are dancing. And the man said, who told you that I'm happy? You see, I don't have any arms. So my back is itching, so I'm doing like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes we might think that we may find ourselves in the worst situation ever. But that's not true. There is always somebody that we are better off. 
than that person. Today's, you know, the gospel is about a terrible disease that existed in ancient times, leprosy. There was no cure for leprosy. And the man decided to go to Jesus. But what I like about this man, even though his body stands with covered of sores everywhere, but he had his own faith in Jesus. He didn't say to Jesus, I heard people say that you could kill me. But what he said, however, he said to Jesus, if you wish, you can leave me. And Jesus said to him, I do wear it, be clean. You see, no figure was more pathetic than a leper. People were deathly afraid of lepers. It was a very contagious disease. And people were afraid that they might catch that disease from them. A leper's life was a living hell. In the case of this leper, people hated the sight of him. And he, in turn, hated the sight of himself. And you look Psalm 31, he said that those who know me are afraid of me. When they see me in the streets, they run away. I am like something thrown away. He sought a tragic lever, Jesus which out his loving hand and he touched it. Something that was forbidden. According to the book of Leviticus, when you are diagnosed with leprosy, you have to leave your own family. You know, if you are a man, you have to leave your wife and children behind. You have to go to the bushes. You have to cover your face. Now, now we are covering our face, but that was something new. The lepers has to cover the face. And more, they, they have what we call a belt. You know, they have to carry that belt. So whenever they hear somebody is approaching, the law mandated them to cry out, to say, stay away, I am a leper. It was a terrible disease. Well, but Jesus did something that was forbidden by the law. He touched a man with leprosy. He himself wanted the ways of being unclean. But he did it out of compassion. You know, the story of the leper has an important message for all of us. You know, at times in life, we can experience tragedy. The death of a loved one, Perhaps a friend betrays us, or an accident leaves a child an invalid, a father loses his job, a mother becomes an alcoholic. Whatever it is, sometimes you know we can experience tragedies upon tragedies. When a misfortune like this strikes our life, we are overwhelmed with grief and anguish. We are crushed as the letter was when he contracted that terrible disease. Maybe he said to himself and to his friends that God is not fair. And then bad things happen to good people. It's as if one of the stages of death described by Dr. Elizabeth Colbert was in his, in his book, the book that she, she wrote in the 1970s, you know, death or dying. He said, you know, there are five steps, and one of the steps is when somebody gets a terrible diagnosis that doesn't say that it cannot be me. It's a state of shock. I'm good. I go to St. Pedro. I go to church. But my neighbor, they don't go to church. I don't deserve that terrible illness. They do. They deserve it, not me. It is always a state of shock, you know, and Imagine putting yourself in the, that leper's position. Maybe he thinks that life wasn't fair. There is nothing that said that 
you know, he contracted that illness because he was a bad person. But what we discover, however, he was a man of faith. We spoke about it last week, about Job. He was a God's fearing man. And all of a sudden, everything was, went wrong in his life. But the leper knew that there is no tragedy that cannot be overcome. You know, when we are facing tragedies in our lives, you and I, all that we have to do is to turn to Jesus. Don't think about that. There are things that he cannot do. He can do everything. That's exactly what brought, you know, the level to help. He knew that Jesus, if he wishes, could have done something for him. And now, for the first time in his life, he looked at his body, the souls were gone. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest, because that's exactly what the law said. One day, there was a group of tourists visited the convent, one well, of the convents of sisters, Mother Teresa in Calcutta. They were all fight and the appalling condition of the poor and destitute patients being cared for by the sisters. One tourist seeing a nun cleaning the protrude sores of a patient remarked with disgust. Sister, even if somebody pays me one million dollars, I would not do what you are doing right now. The nun replied, and neither will I. I'm doing this only for the love of Jesus. Isn't what we are supposed to do as Christians? Doing things only for the love of Jesus. Our failure to do so will result in a grave sin. We call it the sin of omission. We stand for our creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. And became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now make our prayers to Christ our Lord, asking him to renew the cleansing and the healing ways of his Son, in our world today. For the Archbishop's Charities and Development Drive, ABCD, that we understand that we touch many lives through this appeal and that the people who, whose lives we touch may know Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the Church of God in every place, that she may shine forth as a community of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For government agencies working for public health, 
that they may succeed in wiping out the scourge of the thieves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those studying for the priesthood, that they may prepare wisely and well for the permanent grace of ordination. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have died in loving memory of Mary LaPera, Esther Estrada, Nelson Ferreira, that Christ may cleanse them and bring them to glory, especially those who have died alone in hospitals. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray especially for peace in the world, that all countries be healed of every division, treat their citizens with dignity and respect, and for the end of communism, terrorism, and violence in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Well, Lord, our petitions presented before you today. This we ask to Christ our Lord. Christ at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have been from up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always in every way to be the thanks, but the Father Almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love and us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we have lost by disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as exalting and we acclaim. Gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. In universities, you gather in people to yourself, so that from the wise of the Son to its setting, the true sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make all these gifts we have brought to you for consideration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving good thanks. He gave the bread to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when Sophia was ended, they took the chalice. And once again, he gave you thanks and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of the church and you could have the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. When that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. We make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance to your elect. Especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Virgin that has passed to the blessed Apostle with San Pedro and all the saints who are busy throughout the ages. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation with the Lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm with faith and charity your pagan church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gone for yourself. Listen graciously to the prayer of his family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, but that yourself, all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our devoted brothers and sisters, in the special group of Mary, Napera, Esther Estrada, and Nelson Ferrer, and your passing from his life, give kind of minutes to your kingdom. There we hope. To enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world for the night's good. Through him and with him and in the name of God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Trespass against us, and lead us 
frequent peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we win the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace in unity, now on into your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace I live with 
service this evening. Well, we have received another uh, donations, uh, thanks to Len. I know Len Clements is here, and also Joy Woodoff, you know, the, for the AC. So if somebody donated, uh, we have received uh, ten thousand dollars from Parsley Foundation. So I, I remember well from Illinois or what Illinois. So thank you, Len. I know you made that possible. <laughs> thank you for service. 
and if people walk in, I think maybe they are working at it, they're waiting for all the equipment to have that big AC going on. As a matter of fact, we get more than we ask for, right? Is it a really waiting sometimes? <laughs> so thank, thanks to all of you, people have contributed $500, you know, many people, $1,000, uh, and I believe we got, you know, close for a bit now to 40 in something, you know, 45. You know. So we thank all of you for your great generosity. In the meantime, they are working on the AC. The company is working, hopefully very soon, but we will have it going. Well, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's to all of you. Anybody celebrating a birthday? Blessing? People visiting? The visitors would like to welcome all of you to San Pedro, because they have home because of Sukasa, right? Today we have goodies on the outside, the warmest game, we are preparing some goodies. You know, if you like it, the best, I don't know if they have chocolate, you know, but you might need to stand by the table. They have everything, we, you know, the chocolate cookies, you name it, and uh, all good sweet stuff, right? <laughs> sweet to the outside waiting for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. God. One more announcement. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Right? That will be the beginning of Lent. So we have two masses in our parish with imposition on the, of the ashes. 8 30 a.m. in the morning, and the last mass will be at 5 p.m. And ashes will be imposed in both masses this coming, this coming Wednesday. What the church says about Lent? Well, Ash Wednesday is a day for fasting. If you are you know, between 18 to 14, I believe, to uh, uh, 59. You know? <laughs> if you are 59, if you have 60, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, 60, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, that's the day of fasting and also on Good Friday. Those are the two days that the church says fasting in obtenance. All right, Mass is ended. Like I said, we are go in peace. <laughs>